Now we thought we had a really good idea about how we were gonna build the stairs with these railroad ties. But as I got thinking about it, the chemicals that are in the railroad ties bothered me a little bit. But what really bothered me was the fact that they're a lot dirtier than I remember them. And I just don't wanna track that in the house. So we're going with the treated lumber just like we did in the front and I'm getting ready to build another one out here. I don't know how far I'm gonna be able to get on that with what's left of the sunshine today, but that's what I'm gonna work on. pressure to get into the house has been mounting. And we have deadlines approaching that we won't be able to move again. Everything is taking shape, but nothing seems to happen fast enough. We've been celebrating our little victories along the way, but we can't pause too long before we jump into the next task. This weekend, we're putting our attention toward completing the functioning bathroom and wrapping in some of the other tasks that have been on our long list. It's going to go back to the wall, all the way to the wall, mm -hmm. once I cut the hole out for the plumbing to come through. Did you just nick the bottom? Nick where? Oh. What did you nick? I didn't do that. Oh, it's dirt. That's it's your dirt. I'm sure it's your dirt. Not my doing, lady. I used to have a little wood shop in my garage in the suburbs. It went a long way to satisfying my need to work with my hands and create things. I have used a lot of different finishing techniques and no matter which type you use, finishing is always one of the hardest and most time consuming parts of the job. It's a lot like building a house. You feel like you should be done, but there's still a lot left to do if you want the job done right. So it's been about two hours since I put this on here and it ain't dried at all. 
so I started watching some videos and found out that this is a hard wax oil and I put it on wrong. So it said to wipe off the excess, which I thought I wiped off enough that it would dry, but it doesn't dry like a varnish. It soaks into the wood and then it dries. So I'm gonna get all the excess off of here because this thing, if you touch it, it's oily. When using any finishing oil, you have to be careful about the heat generated on your rags and any pieces of paper that you use to wipe stuff up. Don't bundle it up and toss it in the trash because it generates enough heat to catch fire and it could take your house down. Rags should be left to dry outside laying flat and if you have to bundle up the trash, put it in water in a metal container and put it outside. time to take off my carpenter hat and put on my electrician hat. Japan has had these lights picked out and stored for a number of years. She knows exactly what she wants and exactly how she wants them installed. I don't mind having the instruction in this instance. Because if she makes all the calls on it, I know that I didn't make a mistake on it. And if she decides in a couple of weeks or months that she doesn't like the way something's done there, she knows that she's the one who made the call and she knows that she can get me to change it. Where do you want this position? Is this I about right? I knew you were going to ask me. Yes, I do. Because, okay, when you are washing your hands, they're wet. And when you turn this off, I just want to be able to get the drips in here. So, <coughs> right there. So, do you and want I feel any like further back? No. No, because any further back, you're like, in your back. You, you want to be able to stand up straight and, you know, wash right. your hands. <coughs> Keeping in mind it's made of porcelain, so it's not perfect. instead of smashing it out with a hammer to get it off the top. Do you want me to hold it up by yourself? Well, can you put the pad over here? I'll put this on. Okay. I'll put this down on. Where it is. 
turn this over and I'm going to try to match up as best I can with the blue line before I set it down and then we're going to measure it and do any adjustments because that's what it should require. So here's what I need you to do. Mm -hmm. I know this is not going to be easy. No. I need you to not touch this sink <laughs> or this table for a couple hours. Okay. All right. I'm going to go do something. All right. They need to set, mm -hmm. and it needs to cure so that that doesn't move. Okay. All right. Looks great. Thanks. I'm going to go work on something else. Step two coming up. So if you guys have been watching for a while, you know we put our tank in, we put the line in, line comes over to here, I've had it on the little air pressure thing for a long time, I took the pressure off a couple weeks ago, but it's time to get it connected into the house. So I've already connected this pipe, I put a little, uh, I keep wanting to call that a union, but I know that's not, not what it's called, crap, anyway, coupling. All right, I got a three quarter inch coupling. I got a three quarter inch pipe. I'm running a three quarter inch line all the way across. I have just set this on top of it. I have not started turning it yet. The pipe is in there nice and snug. Now, there's some play still in this pipe that's in the ground that plays to my advantage today because it allows me to adjust back and forth so I can get into this pipe a little easier. bring that around there we go that'll work hello everybody I am getting ready to hook up my propane tank now this is the first stage regulator over on the side of the house you'll see on that tall cast iron stick right there that I've got the second stage regulator the first stage regulator takes the gas from the high pressure that it's got inside the tank on a day like today, probably about 150 PSI, down to 12 PSI to 14 PSI so that it can go through the pipe here safely to the house. At the house, the stage two regulator, the one that I have, takes it down to, I believe, one half PSI. Right now, because I haven't had the tank filled yet, I'm not gonna be hooking up the pigtail. The pigtail will go in here. I've got a, that is a one fourth inch MIP. I've got a one fourth to one half because that is a one half MIP. And that will take it to the size necessary for me to put this in, put a little curl in this, and this goes in a P.O.L., which is Presto One Light, I believe, is what it stood for. And that is the fitting that goes into this valve right there. That is going to wait until they've actually come and filled the tank because there's a little thing right there that says this is vacuum purged and they're supposed to fill through the POI. I don't know if they do that or not, but... I want this to go as smoothly as possible. I've gone ahead and loosened this cap right here, and I'm gonna go ahead and take it off. This is the poly line that we put in between the house and here. I'm gonna clean this up just a bit because it looks like it's got some sealant on the edge there. Well, got a lot of sealant. Now, before I really get started, let me just say, I am not a professional. Don't take this as suitable instruction if you've never done this before. This is solely for entertainment and informational purposes only. When I was looking around for this information, I could not find it. I want to share what I have found with anybody out there. And if there's any professionals watching and I do or say something wrong, feel free to weigh in in the comments. I welcome uh, any additional knowledge we can share with anybody else out there. But I've had a hard time tracking this info down. 
or finding videos that actually showed how to do this. And I wanna make sure that I show it so people have an understanding if they decide to take this sort of thing on, what's involved and why they might wanna hire a professional. Hopefully it's not too easy. For the connection between here and here, I am using one half inch interior diameter copper. And I really don't want to take this curl out too much because I'm going to come up here and curl straight into this. So I do need to make sure that the piece I've got going down to there is long enough. So the first thing I would probably want to do before I cut this, is do it. I need to put another cut on this because this is ugly as sin. But then I need to put a flare on there and make sure I'm doing a good flare. Where is my cutter? It's in my pocket. I don't want to waste any, but I also don't want to be too stingy because I want to make sure I get a good cut. There you go. Now, that's what it started with. And that's a cut that I put on it. Pretty happy with that. Take a neat pair of needle nose pliers, deburr that a little bit, just roll it around in here just a tad, just to take that sharp edge off the inside. This is a 5 8 nut that goes on here. One half will not work because this is one half interior diameter, which makes the outside of it five eighths. And I know this because I bought one half first and they don't fit. And if you try to put the one half on there, it also doesn't fit. You gotta go with the five eighths. And I think, I don't think that's too much right there. I don't think it's too little. That looks about right. Since I can't get this thing over top of it, it kind of tells me that I probably got too much sticking out. Well, I did something dim. The first thing I did was not put my nut on here. And I bet you guys at home who know what, uh, know what this is supposed to look like are saying that to the screen right now. You didn't put the nut on there, you're right. Now, it's got like a little ratcheting feature here. And once it starts to ratchet, you know you've gone as far as it'll go. And that's what I've done. So I'm gonna back off of this. And I'm gonna find out if I overdid this and didn't give it enough space. Come all the way out. Take this off of here. Give it on the side a little bit but that flare looks pretty good and uh that's the first flare i ever made so if you're wondering if you'll be able to make a flare if i can do it i'm sure you can do it but i should have put on here in the first place now this is too big this is too big i'm gonna have to cut that off and do it again because it's gonna be coming from the other side, but this should slide all the way down in there. And uh, it doesn't. After my short-lived celebration and discovering that I'd made the cone section of the flare too big, I did it again. I ended up doing three of them before I figured out what the proper alignment was, how much of the copper pipe had to be sticking out the end of the little clamp part when I did the flare. But for a first time, that isn't too bad, and I only had to waste about four inches of pipe. All right. Since I was having trouble, there's two things. One, I still made that flare a little too wide, and that curve is causing me a little bit of an issue. So I'm coming down, I'm gonna cut it right there where it's nice and straight. We're gonna do it again, third time.
Third time's a charm. All right. Fills it up just perfectly. Problem is I gotta get it right on this one on the first time. I'm gonna leave myself just a little extra in case, but I'm gonna be coming from down there, up, and connecting in right here. Got a little bit of wiggle room side to side on this thing, but I've gotta make sure that I'm coming up the right distance. The connections for the copper pipe use flare fittings, both at the iron pipe and at the stage one regulator. Right there. I'm using a three quarter inch poly line connected to the tank by a one half inch interior diameter copper line. Because that's running at about 10 to 12 psi, the volume of gas going through that line far exceeds my needs. In fact, I probably could have used a 3 8 inch copper line all the way from the first stage regulator to the second stage regulator. But with the price of copper these days, using the poly line, which I think is more durable in the long run, was also cheaper. That's pretty daggone snug. I don't want to go crazy on it, but that is a copper to brass fit right there between those two pieces between the flare and the flare nut and you just cramp it down with that once we start getting some pressure in here we're going to spray this down to see if i need to hunker down on that and this in here i'm not as tight as i am on that iron fitting as i turn this this one keeps going in here and this i don't think is iron i think that's a block of aluminum i don't want to break it so, yep. it's definitely on there snug. Yep. I think we're good as far as that goes. Now, when I put this thing on here, I'm only attached with one bolt. When I put that on here, this was bent up and this would not shut, so I had to bend this tab down. It's just a cheap piece of metal. But what it does is it allows me now that's on there to fasten this thing down on top of it and help protect that manifold. As far as this side goes, we're good. That's the side that I think is going to give me a problem. Now this is what I was talking about when I said it was going to be a bear. I've been trying to figure out how to make this line up. I really should have had this all connected before I filled this with dirt. That way I could just adjust it the way I wanted to. And my fear is that I'm going to have to dig this back out in order to get the adjustment up and down for this. However, I think after coming up here and looking at this, I think this 8 inch with this piece on top might line up just perfectly to get me in here with a union. That would be awesome. I'd, mm, I'd really rather have this thing back a little bit, but if this works, I'm willing to accept that and call it a day. Just a bit too high. Well, I'm gonna get this piece on here. And we're going to get to where we have an idea what we got to do. <sighs> but that doesn't line up. We're not even talking an inch. Yeah, that don't line up. All the talking in the world ain't going to get this done. So sometimes you just got to shut up and do the work. Propane is a byproduct of natural gas production and gasoline refining. It's a gas at room temperature and normal atmospheric pressure, but when cooled to negative 44 degrees Fahrenheit, it becomes a liquid, which makes it very easy to contain and transport. 
It was first discovered by French chemist Marcelon Berthelot in 1857. It was found also to be dissolved in light crude oil in Pennsylvania in 1864, and the first patent for liquefaction of propane was acquired in 1911. And by 1922, the first year of recorded commercial production, liquid propane sold 223,000 gallons. And by the next year, 1923, that number jumped to a million gallons of liquid propane. By itself, propane is odorless, and the classic rotten egg smell comes from the addition of ethyl mercaptan, which wasn't added to it until the 1930s. By 1947, 62% of all American homes had either natural gas or propane as their heat source. Natural gas is cheaper, but it requires a piping network, so it's common in cities and suburbs, and over 187 million Americans use natural gas. But natural gas requires complicated and expensive equipment to liquefy it for transport, and must be cooled and kept at under 260 degrees below zero Fahrenheit. Propane, on the other hand, usually needs no special refrigeration during transport. And even though it has to be delivered by truck to each address, and it's more expensive, it's still the heating source for about 5 million American homes. I'm about to make that 5 million in one. Well, doesn't always work. My intention was to dig down enough that I could lower the entire line for the last 5 or 6 feet and just mount it right up to the Union. But unfortunately, the water line is right below the gas line, and I didn't have that much play. So I've got to disassemble the whole thing, change the way that I've got the orientation on it, put some different size pipes, and reconnect it to the house. And since I've already got it dug open, if I make it just a little bit shorter, I can lift it up. No issues here. Santa is here and I'm gonna get her to help me. You got it? You just hold it so it's that way and I'm gonna hold it so the pipe don't move. All right. I ain't going nowhere. That's a pain in the butt. Ah, uh, so you have to dig in. Oh, but you're, it's in, babe. It's in. Oh my gosh. We are connected. We have a line <laughs> coming from oh here gosh. to the other side. Oh, is it connected to the? Yep. So why did you need the receipt, babe? Because they won't deliver us propane unless we can prove that we own the tank. Oh, gotcha. We have that receipt. Cause... What? Oh my gosh. That's that pretty done. exciting. Yep. Yeah. Come inspect my work. <laughs> well. I was successful outside getting the propane tank hooked to the house. I wanted to, get to uh, I wanted to get a little bit more done, so I came in here and did the plumbing. It actually has a very low profile. It doesn't interfere with the ability to store things in here, which turned out really nice. It's back behind the drawers on this one, so.
There we go. Get that fingerprint smudge off there. Not too shabby. That turned out really nice too. I really like the look of this teak countertop. Very sharp. Bathroom is coming along. I am about to do something that might be foolish and I hope it's not foolish. I need to put water in here because I've connected this to the sewer line. And the moment that I pulled the plug out, you could smell a little bit of sewer gas starting to work its way out. And even if this isn't running, I need to get a bucket of water or something and put it in here. But, and now like I said, I've only got the water turned on a little bit because I didn't want to have too much blast in case there was a problem. Uh-oh, what's leaking? Water's leaking. Yeah, my plumbing is leaking. What did I do wrong? Looks like I didn't fasten it down. Well, I'm gonna try this again. I figured it out, I think. I don't see anything leaking from underneath this time. And the pipe is dry, so I think we fixed that. That's better. Look at that. Water. Water. That is a beautiful thing. I think I'm going to go back to the other side, turn the main line for the water over here off, come back, drain this line a little bit so that there's no problems. If there is any kind of a leak anywhere, I don't have anything under pressure. Thanks for watching. That's about all we have time for this week. We've made a lot of progress and we're getting a lot closer. We'll see you all next time. Damn, that ain't pain in the ass. Good God. <laughs> I don't know. <coughs> Still, I'm just taking this and probably be a good thing if I zip my fly. Try that again. <clears throat> that was a good time.